Now let us welcome Dr. Judith Roden. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming and for this exciting agenda. And aren't we incredibly lucky to have somebody who understands and has practiced global health so well as Jim Kim at the head of the World Bank? I think it will be an extraordinary journey for all of us. 100th anniversaries are best celebrated among dear friends, both old and new. And looking around this room tonight, I see so many of both, members of our board, Many recipients of our fellowship programs, our beloved Rocky Docs, members of the China Medical Board and Peking Union Medical College, and so many of our colleagues and partners and grantees. Speaking of Peking Union Medical College, as a reminder of what a small world we really do live in, did you know that President Zhang and I have something in common from our past? Before coming to Rockefeller, I was president of the University of Pennsylvania, where President Young did some of his postdoctoral work. While I didn't know him then, I am so pleased to know him now and to count him as a good friend. I'd also like to thank our interpreters who have been so gracious today and will be with us tomorrow. Reminds me. Reminds me of a particularly charming story I read the other day about President Nixon's famous first trip to Beijing in 1972. Over the course of the trip, the American president came to know his interpreter quite well, and on his final evening, he gave a fine toast about their friendship, which of course she was interpreting for the crowd. Fortunately, one of her colleagues jumped up from the audience just in time to translate the tribute so that she wouldn't have to say those nice things about herself on behalf of President Nixon. So I hope I don't embarrass the interpreters too much by thanking them tonight. As many of you know, we're in Beijing to celebrate our centennial year at the Rockefeller Foundation. Now, obviously, we recognize that a country that's been around for 5,000 or so years, 100 years may not seem like that much of an accomplishment. Indeed, we're humbled and, and quite inspired by the history we find here in China. And we're so pleased that China continues to be a significant partner in our work. Because while the Rockefeller Foundation is only a small blip in the sweep of China's history, the Rockefeller Foundation simply would not be the institution it is today without China. It is because of his deep admiration for the people of China that our founder, John D. Rockefeller, established a foundation global in purview the first global foundation in America. And throughout our century, China has always been there to inspire new innovations and new ways of thinking about our work, ideas that have improved the lives of vulnerable and poor people throughout the world. It has been an incredible journey so far, and we owe a great debt of gratitude to the people of China for accompanying and guiding us and in many cases leading us on this journey, one that always brings us back to Beijing. So on behalf of my colleagues, we look forward to growing and strengthening and nurturing this incredible partnership for the next 100 years. Thank you again for being here tonight. Now please welcome David Rockefeller, Jr. Honored guests, good evening. This is not going to be an evening of long speeches. This is going to be an evening of enjoying each other and eating, but just a few comments. Um, and I want to echo Judy's thanks to all the support team here and also say to our speakers and panelists and moderators, what an extraordinary job I think you did this afternoon. It was just a tour de force, and I thank you so much. And also to all of my Rockefeller Foundation colleagues, uh, to my fellow board members, and uh, to the senior staff of the foundation for putting on this extraordinary uh, event. It is a real pleasure for me to be here to celebrate the long-standing relationship of the Rockefeller Foundation in China 
one that, as you have learned, stretches as far back as our charter, which began, of course, 100 years ago in 1913. I've, I've, there's so many reflections about today, and I will not, uh, in, in, uh, I will not give them all to you, but just a couple that occurred to me. I've been reflecting on the uh, several themes, one of which is the real beauty of our differences while there is the imperative of our commonalities, the importance of individual initiative on uh, each of our behalfs in balance with collective action, and so many other themes appear to me today. My own family's affection, really affection for China, its culture, and its people stretches all the way back to the 19th century when my great-grandfather sold his first kerosene in China and made his first gift to China missions when he was just 24 years old. I don't think there was any connection between the two. I know that. Were he here with us tonight, however, he would be brimming with pride at what your country and this foundation have achieved together from medical education and public health to our work in rural areas and our catalytic support of rice biotechnology to advancing vaccines that have saved countless lives. We have done our best to do serious work to address serious challenges. But if you'll allow me, I'd like to tell a humorous story, one that you may not have heard before. My grandfather, John D. Rockefeller, Jr., arrived to much fanfare to dedicate Peking Union Medical College in 1921. During his visit, he and my grandmother, Abby, set out to see the sights. They were traveling in what he later described as a, quote, conveyance which looked like a miniature house, unquote. The curtains over the windows obstructed their views of the passing city, so they inquired if they could lower the removable tin roof to get a better view. As they proceeded on their tour, my grandparents noticed the smiles and the bemused looks from passers-by on the street. Being used to a bit of attention, they didn't think much of it and returned polite smiles. It wasn't until later they discovered that the manner in which they were traveling with the roof retracted and standing in full view was precisely how criminals were transported to their executions. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I tell this story only to demonstrate that while we have achieved tremendous things over our century together, we have never stopped learning from one another. <laughs> there is still a great sense of discovery and anticipation inherent in our work as we look forward to the next century, and I look forward to what we might learn together in this century, our second to come. So now please enjoy your meals and each other, and thank you very much. <laughs>